What's up guys, Nathan here. With the advent of Blight League, GGG has introduced a new system called Anointing, which basically lets you enchant an amulet of your choice with any notable passive node from the skill tree. They've also introduced a handful of new anointable uniques, but I won't be talking about those in this video. The catch to this system is you'll need oils to interact with it, and as you've probably noticed, the stronger the passive you want to anoint, the rarer its required oils are. Wanted to anoint Soul of Steel, Constitution, or Whispers of Doom? Well, tough luck, because at the time of this recording, each of those anoints will cost you just over a couple of exalts apiece. That's where this video comes in. GGG has done their absolute best to balance this system, but luckily, it's not perfect. There exist plenty of extremely powerful nodes that you can anoint using the cheapest of oils, and today, I'm going to go over some of them. Starting off with one of my personal favorites, we have Master of Force. This node is relatively powerful for pure physical or conversion builds, provides a nice bit of strength to help meet gear requirements, and gives you a global 4% chance to deal double damage. If you have no other sources of this stat, which is often the case, this is basically a 4% more damage multiplier. If you aren't invested in armor, I honestly think this node is better than Soul of Steel. 4% chance to block attack and spell damage, 8% chance to block projectile attacks, and 40% increased defenses from your equipped shield. This is an especially appealing defensive node for ES-based characters with their huge titanium spirit shields. Honestly, this is probably my favorite node on the tree for generic crit-based casters. It gives a decent amount of crit multi and cast speed, as well as 4% increased movement speed, which is not an easy stat to come by. Plus, it's extremely cheap, even for this list. For all you minion lovers out there, this node should be an auto-include for pretty much all of your builds. It's the only source of minion onslaught for non-guardians, and it also provides a ton of minion damage, attack, cast, and movement speed. Its only issue is its horrendous place on the tree, making it a prime candidate for anointing. Let's be honest, you probably forgot this node existed, but hear me out. If you're playing a staff-based attack build invested in armor, 30% increased damage isn't half bad, 20% increased armor is decent, and 600 flat armor and 4% block chance is insane. Again, this node is too out of the way to be considered normally, but for anointing, it's top tier. For those of you playing fire conversion skills such as Infernal Blow, Consecrated Path, Molten Strike, or Tectonic Slam, this is the node you've always wanted but could never validate pathing to. 24% increased fire damage is nice, but gaining 5% of physical damage as extra fire is unheard of for a non-ascendancy notable. This is the node that pretty much all crit staff builds want but can't always find a way to path to. 60% increased critical strike chance and 30% increased crit multi are absurdly high value for this node's relatively small cost. For the whole six of you playing mace builds right now, this node is absurdly strong. Not only does it provide decent damage, as well as tons of attack speed, accuracy, and movement speed, but it's positioned absurdly far away from the amazing mace nodes Pain Forger and Galvanic Hammer, making it an impressively efficient choice. While not as specialized as some of the other options on this list, I still think Bloodletting is an interesting and versatile node for attack builds that inflict bleeding semi-reliably. 40% increased attack damage is huge, and 5% reduced damage taken from bleeding enemies is a weirdly strong effect to add to your defensive layers. Sometimes, all your build needs is some accuracy, and there's no better option than acuity. 100 flat accuracy, 15% increased global accuracy, and some attack speed and dexterity may not be best in slot for DPS, but this anoint can still be a cheap way to get your left side of the tree build into a functional state. For elemental builds that lack good penetration, this node is almost always an insane DPS gain, but tends to be just out of the way. Luckily, it's weirdly cheap, so definitely consider it, especially for shadow builds that have plenty of crit and cast speed, but just need a little bit more boss damage. In the same vein as Acuity, this is a great node if you're trying to cap your accuracy, but also if you're trying to stack evasion. It's traditionally been extremely unpopular due to its position on the tree, but as an annoying, its unique stats and impressively low cost are huge selling points. Anyway, I don't want this video to be an hour long, so that about does it for my top budget annoyance. 
However, there are dozens of other fantastic options, so I figured I'd put up a screen of some more good ones for you to look up on your own time. Thanks for watching, this has been Nathan, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. I wanted to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikrak, Squally, Zoljin, Coda, Julia, Allen, Kepler, Sparky, Cat of Fusk, Putzak, Heiser, Ada, One, Olivier, Ice Dude, Gin, Zinc, Anonymous, and Orange Gina. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. I feel like saying you're awesome is kind of getting old. I've said that so many times. It doesn't really adequately express how uh, how truly awesome you guys you guys are. Oh shit, there I go doing it again. Oh well. Anyway, you guys are great. Thank you. If anyone else wants to join the uh, Patreon team, you can check me out at patreon.com slash NathanBillyBob. My Instagram right there is NathanWalkerYT. And then my little Discord, you know, where I hang out and, you know, my community is. And we just talk about Path of Exile and other cool stuff is there in the bottom right-hand corner. So feel free to check that out as well. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you, like, in two days.